Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and providing some brand new PCBs that might hopefully make this robot work a little bit better. Well, actually a lot of them, because I'm kind of expecting that I might break one or two of these as we put on a 75 gram weapon bar. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So to get those of you who have missed this series up to speed a little bit, this is Low Jinx currently. It's supposed to be running the 75 gram High Jinx blade. However, uh, it basically struggled to do that with the tiny little brushless motor that I put in it last time, which is basically all I could fit to make the thing make weight. Now, the PCB carriage or undercarriage is not a unique idea to this new build. This version does have a much, much larger PCB. This is the PCB compared to the new one. And you can see it was basically the entire base plate, but this thing takes up about 15 grams, 12 to 15 grams, somewhere in there. This is about half of that. And I think I can fill out the rest of this space with lighter materials to maybe get a bit of weight saving. Now, the reason I want some weight saving is this motor, as mentioned, was just not powerful enough to spin this gigantic heavy bar. It's totally fine with this one, which is about 50 grams. However, uh, doing that, I learned that this bar is slightly unstable, which caused the whole robot to wobble when it got to high speed and then it exploded. So we need to do a few electronics repairs in here uh, as we go through this to get the electronics back up and running again. But that is something we can do later on. The big thing here is that I am moving from these tiny little motors, which are a 1507 to this big boy, which is a 2204. So I'm going from a 15 mil diameter to a 20 mil dia 22 mil diameter, which is huge, but it also means that uh, I've got a five gram difference in weight between these two motors, and I need to take that out of something, uh, and it can't come out of the weapon, so it has to come out of the chassis, which is again, where these much, much thinner PCBs come in. I've also already mocked up and printed uh, something that is very hard to see because it's black on black, but this is a TPU chassis, which will have this PCB locked into it. And then you can see I've got space for the electronics and a lid to go down over top of that. So I think the next step is to pull apart the old chassis, get everything weighed out and see if we're actually even gonna make weight again with the new brushless motor. All right, all apart now, ready to get this underway. Now I'm gonna make one more alteration to the electronics in here. In this stack up, I've got a seven amp brushless speed controller, but here I have a 20 amp brushless speed controller that is basically the same size ish, it's close, it's a little bit thicker than the seven amp one, but I've heard from some people that the 20 amp ones just have better startup on them. So we're gonna try and use this to actually be able to spin this bar properly. I mean, this with our bigger motor should get us over the line, but the thing we care about right now is weight. So the old chassis weighs 17 and a half ish grams. The new chassis, which is these two pieces together, weighs a bit over 12 and a half grams. So that is perfect. That is the difference in weight between our two motors. So that should get us there, uh, I hope, because the other problem that we may face here is that because this version, we've got a PCB underneath, the whole thing is quite rigid and locked in place. In the new version, uh, we don't have PCB all the way back, which means that if I kind of hold this down, you can see that we don't have the same rigidity in here, which could be a problem. But look, let's get the whole robot together, make uh, weight with it, see how we're sitting on weight. And then if we've got some spare weight, we can try and add some rigidity back into the chassis. All right, new electronics are now mostly soldered together. I've also kind of pushed things in place a little bit. This, uh, as with the last version, is gonna be a difficult pack to get everything to sit where it needs to sit. Uh, but I think we should be able to do it eventually. It's just gonna be a little bit of kind of massaging wires into exactly the right place. Uh, however, this time around, because the circuit board, I mean, it is mounting to the underside as it did last time, but this time the top is a solid print, which means we need to access from the underside. 
uh, it means that, yeah, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult to do because I can't like sit the motors down anywhere before I've bolted everything down. So kind of like motors kind of glued temporarily into the flexible plastic, but that's not necessarily a great idea. Uh, and we're just gonna plastic screw these in place. Now, this is one of the advantages of this particular system is that the flexible plastic should take these screws quite well. And these are actually lighter than the screws I was using last time. So that should be a benefit. Oh, okay, that's interesting. I might have to... Ah, uh, yes, do, do the thing that is always advised when putting in screws, which is get all screws in a little bit and then tighten them down because otherwise nothing will fit. And yes, these are actually quite long screws. I could probably change these out uh, moving forwards, but for now we're gonna use nice big long screws. Okay, with everything together, that's actually not looking too bad. I am a little concerned about a kind of raise or a, it might be like pushed up at the back here a little bit but I really can't tell too well. So I think the next thing is gonna to be to actually put a top cover slash base plate on this thing. Uh, and in the fashion of the last version, we are gonna use my new favorite material, which is just a piece of milk jug to make the base plate for this. That should hold on okay. There are two more screw points for the base plate. And in actual fact, I'm just gonna screw it into one of these on either side as well, and that should just hold everything down quite nicely, I reckon. Okay, it is coming down to the final sections of this build now. We have our TPU 3D printed chassis with our lid base plate in, and uh, it is time to see if we actually make weight on this thing. Uh, it could be close, I think. Uh, well, I mean, it was always gonna be close. We'll put a much, much bigger motor in here and we're still gonna stick the giant blade on. So, 72, okay. Uh, so big blade, actually we should, let's put this in here. This is a little TPU spacer, which is very, very needed. A, it's gonna keep the blade up off the actual uh, robot itself and B, it's gonna help it actually articulate. So I'm gonna put this all on together. So that actually, that's gonna sit up quite high maybe. Oh well, that should be fine. Let's get the hydrinx blade on and then we've got a tiny, tiny little nut. Oh, actually, I think we're gonna to need to do this the other way and have the spacer above because I don't think this nut is gonna get all the way down onto the blade properly. Anyway, that is the robot done. Let's put it on the scale. 150.13, <gasps> no way. Oh, okay, that's insane. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect that to work first try. I honestly expected that we would have to go back to the drawing board on this one uh, and maybe do this TPU piece out of like HDPE. Milled HDPE was probably my plan with this uh, if this hadn't worked, but this has worked. The only thing that I want, uh, which I can't actually maybe put in, is I wanted a stand in the back. So last time we had a little foot out the back here that allowed the robot to sit kind of at an angle like this, uh, and it meant that the weapon blade kind of touched the ground a little bit sooner. Um, and that would have been nice to have here as well, but I don't know we're gonna be able to do that unless I do actually do the HDPE, but I kind of want to get this done. Oh, I could actually remove a little bit of extra HDPE from the underside lid base plate thing here, and that might give us just enough to put a little kickstand or two out the back here. They'll just be little TPU loops just to kind of give us that raise forwards so that the bar is uh, more of a threat effectively. That's kind of really what we're aiming for there. Anyway, I don't think we can end this video properly without spinning this thing up.
Uh -huh. Okay, so that was honestly terrifying. I didn't get the throttle above like 20% there, mostly because it was already starting to wobble and vibrate, which Oh boy, that is not good. Uh, that is how I destroyed the last version, is having the weapon go up way, way, way too high and having the robot hit itself and then just annihilate everything because there was too much vibration and flex in the chassis. There's another issue too, well actually two issues. One is that I've got a bad wire connection in one of my motors, which is okay, I knew about that already. The connections here are a little bit Interesting is the word I would use for them because I'm packed in quite tightly and the way I've had to make this work they are a little bit odd so I'm sure I've just broken one of those accidentally as I've like wiggled everything around and also I've got my motors wired in backwards which means that all the work I did packing everything in under here I now need to rip out and redo because by swapping those motor connections over, I am going to have issues with repacking everything because the pack is very, very, very tight. But it works and it's underweight and it has no trouble with the spin up at all. Uh, all I needed to do was get it out of the ESC's dead zone or dead band and it just picked up immediately. So this is going to be interesting. I don't actually know what I want to do with this yet. The plan was to fight it at Havoc, but it may be a little bit temperamental for Havoc. We might have to do something a little bit different. Anyway, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video. Yeah.